Hi, my name's Leo Green. For years I've studied the tips and tricks of Pro-E, the techniques that they don't teach you in school, the stuff that makes it look easy. That means by the time you finish watching this video, you'll have some cool new tools to use, perhaps even a new approach to an old problem, and we'll even have some fun along the way. Today we're going to make a double slider crank mechanism. And so uh, we're going to cover a lot of ground, a lot of little things that you may be able to use along the way, and uh, it ought to end up being something pretty cool. Let's start with a, uh, just make a part, let's make a base for starters. A little spelling issue there. Let's make a base for starters, start with three orthogonal datum planes, and you'll notice that I've changed my uh, basic environment here, I've changed some of the way the toolbar show and, and so on. Uh, perhaps uh, you'll like the way they are right now. Uh, see how the datum planes move when I spin and so on. I think you might like that. Okay, let's pick the top plane. Let's make a protrusion. Go straight to placement, define, middle mouse, and then go to the sketch plane. I've already got references selected. I'll middle mouse that twice, and I'll go straight to sketching. Let's just go ahead and pop in a quick circle. Middle mouse and I'll double click here. Let's say uh, that's about six inches big. Call that done. With a depth of say three quarters or so. Middle mouse. Control D to go back to the default view and I've got myself a little a little disk. Pretty straightforward. I'd like to add some shape to it. So I'm gonna ask for a protrusion that is a cut this time. That goes through all, and the placement is going to be, and this time I'll use the use previous button. Middle mouse, using the same references, so middle mouse twice, and that puts me to a sketch. Now this time I want a, uh, a rectangle that is symmetrical on this disk. So what I'll do, uh, I'll do this a couple of ways so you can see how this happens. If I pop in a center line, click, move, and click. I can ask for now a rectangle with a right mouse. And if I rubber band it correctly, you'll see how it snaps to being um, rectangular and symmetrical. That's because the center lines are already in place. Let's say I don't have the center lines. Watch this. Delete those center lines out of there. Let's say I don't have the center lines and I drop in a rectangle. I'll let it assume that uh, the, le the lengths are equal. Um, but you'll notice that it puts in not only one dimension, but another and a third still to, uh, to uh, locate it. If I ask for a point, though, and bring the point, let it snap to the line, you'll see I can get it to grab all three, the line, the midpoint, and the reference just because I sketch it relatively close and you'll see that all the dimensions are gone except for the one. Kind of a neat little trick. Let's bring that down. I just want to kind of trim these off a little bit. And uh, what's more is I'm going to add a dimension that goes to the tangency so I can always control how much it cuts off and three-eighths will be fine. So I'm going to trim off three-eighths regardless of the diameter. Call that done. And I'm making a cut, but I want it to go that way. Middle mouse. Ah, what did I do? Edit definition. I want it to cut to the outside. Easy to switch. Okay. We're going to be making a double slider crank, and so I'm going to need the two slide tracks. And so we'll do that by adding cuts. Again, so we'll add a cut. In this case, we're going to go on both sides of this plane. So I pick the plane. You'll see how it automatically populates with the references. Middle mouse to go straight to sketching. And I want a symmetrical cut, so I'll right click, grab the center line, drop that in. I want to also use as a reference the top of this uh, of the part. So we'll go back to sketch references and select the top, top the top surface. 
So I can ask for a line that goes like so, and this might be half of the slot. Right click, grab the whole business, go to the mirror icon. Now I've got the uh, the whole thing defined. Let's let's ask for some specific dimensions. Maybe from here to the top. I want maybe uh, width overall. And um, let's go with a uh, an angle. Okay, so that that's pretty good. Now it I noticed that it has also a width at the top. Now, why is it asking for that? Why is it recommending that we have a dimension on the top? Well, let's find out what this dimension does. By selecting it and right-clicking and going to Modify, Modify. Let's go to Modify with that dimension. I get my one Modify dialog out. Well, I can use the slider to find out what it does. Ah. So even though I added the reference as the top, it's not connected to it anymore. Now, why might that have happened? Well, you'll, if you remember, when I started my sketch, I started it in the middle, came out, and dropped in the rest, and then I mirrored it. When I first sketched it, it snapped to this reference. But when I mirrored a line, it replaced that vertex with the other side of the line. Notice there's no vertex in the middle. And so that constraint is no longer uh, available or there. So let me, uh, while I got this dimensioned, oh, the dimension selected, I'll delete the dimension so it goes back to a gray one. And then using constraints, I'll put the point on. And that'll control um, the height. And no longer is there any extra dimensions. Let's ask for some specifics here. Uh, perhaps we'll change this to one. Oh, here's something else I want to show you. Watch this. I'll grab all these dimensions, go to Modify. And there's my dialog. And I can change this first one. Right now it's 47. Let's make it uh, half inch. And you notice it goes jumping straight to the next. And we'll go maybe 36 or 3 quarters with a maybe 75 degrees there. So next time you've got a lot of dimensions to modify, box, grab them all, pull up the Modify Dimensions dialog, and just change one after the other after the other. All right, Control-D to go back to the default view. I'll say I'm done with my sketch, and there is what will be my cut. But I'm going to go to the Options now and say I'd like this one to be through all, as well as the other to be through all. And there's a cut. It goes all the way through. I'll go back to the shaded mode here so you can see the cut that goes goes through there.